Today's lecture will focus on valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, also known as v sepper theory. It's a bit of an awkward long name, but if you understand each of the words, it's really not too complicated. Imagine, if you will, a Lewis structure for something like chlorine. Well, chlorine has seven valence electrons. You could draw a Lewis structure. Um, that would look something like this, have seven valence electrons, and if I were to circle those and ask you what those are, well you'd say, well they're electrons, and I'd say, well how many are there? And you'd say, well there's a pair of them, there are two, uh, and what kind of electrons are they? Well Lewis structures only show valence electrons, shell just means energy level, so really they SEP just is a long way of saying these guys or these guys or these you know these pairs what are they and then the question is well what are they doing well they are repelling they're all negative these are negative these are negative these are negative we know that opposites attract but like charges things that are the same they repel so at the end of the day what we've learned is that these pairs if we use common sense, we can say, well, these pairs of electrons want to get as far away from each other as possible. And we can use this to determine shapes for molecules. Today we will not get all the way through to determining shapes of molecules. We will stop uh, at determining this thing called electron geometry, <coughs> um, which would be the first three steps in this. The next video we will deal with the fourth step of determining molecular geometry. Um, but the steps are pretty simple. Uh, to start out with, you draw a Lewis structure correctly. Um, then you look at the center atom and count pairs around the center atom only. So um, you probably need to work an example here. So let's take an example of something, let's say um, SO2. Well, SO2, if you uh, by the way, this video does not teach you how to do Lewis structures. If you do not have know how to do Lewis structures, you should go back and watch one of the Lewis structure videos because well, we're going to assume that you know how to do those here. So um, if we count them up, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 uh, electrons here. And I believe that's the correct number. We need 6 from the sulfur and... 18 from all three of the oxygens give you 24. So that is the correct Lewis structure. So um, we have drawn the Lewis structure correctly, let's hope. Uh, and then we're going to look at the center atom. Well, the center atom is sulfur in this case. And we're going to count pairs of electrons around the center atom only. Now this is a little bit confusing. It may be better not to use the word pairs. A lot of teachers and textbooks usually kind of say the word pair, but uh, there are other ways of of uh, saying this. So you see electron regions or electron, uh, the Chem 2 book says the electron domains. But basically we're looking for places where there are electrons. And it doesn't matter whether there's one or two or three or six, or it matters is where are there are electrons. So we're going to count pairs. How many places are there? A pair is a place. So we want to ask ourselves, how many places around here are there electrons? Well, it's kind of simple. You say, well, there's, uh, there's a bond here, a bond here, and a double bond here. So that's three places, so we would call that three pairs or if you prefer three regions or three electron domains. <clears throat> this example does not have any lone pairs uh, around the center atom, but those would count as well. We'll do one with a lone pair in a little bit. So, oh, there's the word domains there. I didn't need to write it. Well, what do you know? So, once you know how many places there are around the atom, uh, central atom that have electrons, then you go back to the v sepper idea. These, where do these want to be? They want to be as far away from each other as possible. And so, where is that? What does that look like? Well, it turns out to be very 
predictable, and we have uh, lots of ways. If you just Google vSupper, uh, you can probably find a whole lot of examples of things like this. But here's a <coughs> here's what we got um, in this particular website, and I'll put the uh, uh, let's see the website that I'm using should probably go on this video just in case you want to go find it that's what it is and then so if we go in here we just found a place that had three electrons so imagine now this this picture here this regions of electron density that's electron pairs electron domains whatever word you choose to use for it places where there are electrons and this will show us what the arrangement those electron pairs will take to get as far away from each other as possible is. So for three, uh, we can imagine each of these little white uh, places on the model are going to be our electron pairs, and the red place is going to be the center atom. So if we kind of look at this, we can imagine, well, yes, that is about as far away as those can get. If you rotate any of these white spaces in any direction, they would actually get closer to the other two. And so uh, the name of this particular shape that we have here is called trigonal planar. So if you have three places around the electron, as we did in our example, you're going to have uh, a trigonal planar electron shape with a bond angle of 120 degrees. Um, and so let's uh, do an example of something with oh, <coughs> only two places. Well, down here, actually, they've already got some pre-cut examples for us. Here's an example of CO2, carbon dioxide. You've probably seen carbon dioxide's Lewis structure before, and it looks like this. And it has two double bonds. And so if we look at the center atom carbon and ask ourselves, well, how many places are there electrons? There are two. There's a double bond here, and there's a double bond here. Uh, and so what is the farthest two things can get apart? Well, that's pretty simple. It's a line. And so that right there is the orientation that those electron pairs would take to get away from each other. Now, the third example I'd like to do is right here. Water. Water comes up a lot, believe it or not. That's the Lewis structure of water. You've probably seen that before. And if we go in and count the pairs, we'll see that this is the oxygen. It has a, a bond here, that's one. A lone pair here, that's two. Another bond here, that's three. And a f another lone pair here, that's four places. So four places, what is the farthest that four places? And ignore this picture right here. This is, some, this is actually the molecular geometry. We'll do, learn how to do that next. But uh, for this video, we're just focusing on where the electrons go. So the electrons uh, for four, it says, are going to give us this tetrahedral shape. And this is a tetrahedron. You can sort of visualize it like a tripod or uh, some sort of, uh, you know, like a pyramid with a, with a top, something sticking out of the top of it. And so... If we uh, look at that, then... The, the bond angle, we should also know the bond angles. The angle between these two electron pairs is going to be 109.5 degrees, as it was 120 for the trigonal planar, and as it was 180 for the linear. Now, five and six pairs are also possible, but that is more of a Chem 2 topic. We would not deal with that in Chem 1. So those are our examples. You can have two, three, or four pairs. So let's summarize this on a, on a chart. Once you've drawn your Lewis structure, you count uh, how many places around the center atom there are. Uh, if there's a lone pair, a shared pair, a double bond, or a triple bond, they each count as one, and you count up the number of pairs or domains. And then you have to memorize this chart. You just know this chart. And this kind of summarizes what we just said without the actual pictures. So central electron pairs. If there are two, then the electron geometry is linear the bond angle is 180 degrees. If there are three, it's trigonal planar, and the bond angle is 120. If there are four, it's tetrahedral, and the bond angle is 109.5.
and so this is our example of the 182 pair carbon dioxide would have an electron geometry like that 3 pair SO2, SO3 sulfur trioxide would have that trigonal planar 120 degree and water's electron geometry would be like this. Now again, all we're talking about right now, uh, that's tetrahedral, all we're talking about right now is where the electron pairs are. We're not talking about the shape of the atom because uh, some of these electron pairs are attached to, uh, I guess we, I meant to say we are not talking about the shape of the molecule because some of these electron pairs are attached to other atoms and some are not. They all affect the shape but not all of them are attached to atoms and so that becomes a little bit more complicated but we'll cover that in the next video. For now all we need to know is how to draw a Lewis structure, count the center uh, places of electrons around the center atom whether they be lone pairs. Uh, so if we just kind of go through here through these examples just ignoring the molecular shape column and only looking at this how many pairs are there here? Well, we did that one, there are two. Look at this guy, carbon, there's one, two, three places where there's electrons. Doesn't matter if it's a single or a double bond or lone pairs, so there's three here. This guy, double, lone, single, three pairs. Uh, this guy, single, single, lone, lone, that's four pairs. What about this guy? Lone pair, lone pair, single, double, that's four pairs. And so, uh, you can look down here. This guy has a single, a single, a single, a single, and a lone. That's five pairs. Now, we won't do five in Chem 1, but that's what that would look like. And so that's all you got to do right now is relate how many places are there electrons around the center atom uh, from the Lewis structure to get you the electron arrangement around the atom and then the bond angle.